scattered amongst the usual motley collection of broken and battered VCRs, 900 megahertz cordless phones, and CRT tube televisions. I actually discovered something worth buying and keeping at the thrift store that uh, I just happened to visit for the first time today. Unfortunately, it seems that uh, clock radios with a mechanical analog movement have gone the way of the dodo. You'd be probably better off finding um, a new cassette player in a brand new vehicle from any of the major automakers than you would finding an alarm clock with a mechanical movement fully analog. And which is quite unfortunate because if you're like me and a sensitive sleeper, uh, especially very sensitive to ambient lighting, then uh, you might have come to experience the uh, irritation that is brought about by having a digital alarm clock. And all of, of all those alarm clocks I've tried that offer variable brightness or whatever they, the manufacturer feels like calling it when they're making that and designing the product, I just can never get them to be dim enough. So it came as a great surprise to me when I was looking around and for nothing in particular today. Again, seeing some 900 megahertz cordless phones, CRT tube TVs, compact disc changers, a uh, bumper crop of compact disc changers actually and some other loose odds and ends. This was actually being obscured by a broken and uh, dare I even say beaten 1990s electronic type or electric typewriter. Just saw this portion of it and at first, I, at first glance I thought it was just another Sony table radio which I already have one. I don't need another one. And then when I moved the typewriter out of the way I realized that this was actually not just a table radio but a table radio with full alarm clock functionality. What will come as a greater surprise than this uh, item being found in working condition if you happen to notice the second hand moving right now and yes it is keeping proper time it is the price I paid for this just seven dollars and ninety nine cents actually a bit more than that due to tax but still for the price I paid for this I cannot complain considering that somebody on eBay would throw this up there and hawk it for probably to the effect of sixty or seventy dollars just because it's vintage and they need only mention that this is a mid-century piece and uh, feel justified in asking what is an exorbitant price tag. This is the Sony model 8FC-65W. It's a nine transistor, two band AM FM clock radio and it's this cannot tune into the extended AM band now going up to 1700 kilohertz but that's to be expected for something of this age. One thing that is very uncharacteristic of the items uh, being sold at this particular thrift store is the condition this is in. Most everything being sold there is in such terrible, dreadful condition that uh, you probably wouldn't be too far wrong in saying they found it off a trash pile or, or went dumpster diving for their products. This is in remarkably pristine condition for its age. The wood cabinet has a minimum of scratches and gouge marks. and a, This is being just probably a particle board or pressed fiber board uh, case. It's quite nice to actually have all of, the, all of the corners intact and not missing, which is all too common the case with these fiber board cabinets. Somebody hits it or drops it and ends up dinging or breaking off the corners. So really quite remarkable that this has survived all these years not only intact and in excellent physical condition but also its mechanical workings are completely and totally sound either this is very thick plastic or this is actually a glass dial cover this is very obviously plastic as you can see but this over here actually would uh, lead me to believe that it is in fact glass. It's not bending or warping and I really don't want to uh, put that theory to the test and end up breaking the dial glass or plastic whatever it may actually be made of. So a few knobs on the bottom for the volume, the tone control, AM and FM as well as FM with auto frequency control and the customary tuning knob. Tuning indicator here with the tuning dial which is actually calibrated and in alignment which is quite nice. I don't have to take this thing apart and adjust the dial string and dial needle because usually these things end up falling so far out of whack 
It's after flipping the alarm clock on its side that we learn of something you won't see anywhere else on any modern day alarm clock. A speaker of appropriate size for reasonable audio fidelity. That speaker is approximately three and a half inches in size. Yes, you heard me right, three and a half inches in size. If I dim the lights here, and have to go over this switch here, with all the lights in the room currently extinguished, you can actually see just how dim that dial light is. But the camera does it justice in representing it accurately. And then there's just enough brightness for my eyes to see it at night, what time it is, without being disturbed by it in any way, shape, or form. The audio fidelity of this unit rivals that of something like a Zenith Circle of Sound. That's quite peculiar and very unusual in this area. There's been a radio station for the past week or so that's been broadcasting nothing but silence. There's nothing actually being broadcast. I welcome learning why that is, or why that's even being done. Northbound roads are jammed all across the Sunshine State as residents head for higher and drier. Summit on Monday, September 8th. <laughs> There's an age-appropriate song for this alarm clock. Had to shut this light off, actually, because the fluorescent ballast for the circle line, I believe that is the name, light bulb, which is located at the base of the lamp, was causing this radio to just receive silence and interference. Setting of both the clock and alarm is achieved using the knobs on the left and right of the clock. The dial on the left is used for setting the alarm, which as I move you'll see the small orange hand, alarm hand, move to indicate which time is set for the alarm. And to set the time you use the knob on the right to move the clock accordingly. Although it takes a great deal of effort and time to make major adjustments to the clock if this has been unplugged for a long time. See, I'm spinning it, and you can very plainly see how much time will be required to bring this thing back up to the correct time. And I just noticed something that uh, up until this point was unknown to me. I was always looking at this radio face down, if you could describe it as such, and the dial was actually preventing me from seeing the last position, which is radio alarm. I didn't even know that was an option. I thought you could only wake to the radio and nothing else, but I stand corrected. I also neglected to mention that there is a sleep functionality actuated just by moving this inner knob to the time, the length of time you wish for the radio to play before turning itself off automatically. Something else that has been forgotten with the sands of time. Set this to radio alarm actually auto radio which will play both the radio and the buzzer or should unless the buzzer isn't working and now move this so there we go it's playing the radio as I set it to switch this to and I don't hear anything Well, let's turn that off and try it again. Well, with the volume turned down, I'm not hearing anything approaching a buzzer or a beeper. If that's the only thing that isn't working on this alarm clock, given its age and the tendencies of analog clocks to fail with time, be inclined to say I seized an excellent deal. They're going through a tough time right now. Nellie Bell for her kids, Katie, Maria, and Andy. She's just realized, I just had the realization the that the bulb providing illumination of the clock dial is actually a neon bulb located right at the top of the clock. See this transparent plastic surrounding the clock allows the light in. 
very good audio fidelity. Song for you.